Okay. The first thing you want to do is make sure we're out at the right time. Uh, when they about 50% growth out is a good time to start because it really shows the range in in uh, regrowth and, and dormancy in the plants. So that's about now. Uh, there's a couple of inches of growth out there. And so the key is to get out uh, and walk randomly around the field, but also stop at the low spots and high spots. Okay, so uh, what are we looking for when we head out to the field? Uh, we're looking for uh, all sizes of plants. You want to sample small ones and big ones uh, just to get a sense of the symmetry of the plant. We want to make sure we have growth all around the entire crown, not just on one side. And so the key is to take your spade about four inches away from the, the center of the plant uh, and evenly move around the entire plant to make sure you cut all the roots off and you can quickly remove a solid sample like this. And you should end up with a good square with lots of soil on it. Then we'll go to a pail of water and we're going to soak this pail of water, soak the alfalfa in the pail of water until you end up with a single plant and you'll do it relatively gently to save the rhizobia because you want to check them as well. There you have your plant. Okay, so we've dug up some plants. We are looking at a few different things. So walk us right. through what we're looking for. So first thing we do is we're going to look at the symmetry of the plants to make sure that we have growth throughout around the entire crown. There's a good example. We have a little bit of growth on one side versus the other, but that's I'm fairly happy with that. The same with an example like this, where it's pretty pretty symmetrical. What you don't want to see is a plant like this, where we know we see uh, not much growth here. I do see some small buds coming on this side, but it's not very symmetrical, not very healthy. There's another example of a weak plant, and um, there's a real good example of where we had two healthy crowns last, or two growing points last summer. Uh, we're now down to one, and uh, this plant is probably on its way out. So the second thing we do then is we take that root Grab yourself a handy knife and split it down the middle. You can see there's quite a bit of rot in the first six inches of the root. Um, and so this tells me this plant is not healthy and will not survive uh, another winter. Uh, it will produce this year as you can see, uh, maybe a little bit uh, yield deficient, but um, so we can talk about what to do with that later. The next thing we do when we're looking at these plants, we'll look for rhizobia. The hard thing with this technique is to actually find the rhizobia because they do wash off quite easily. I do happen to find, I did find one cluster, a rhizobia right in here, real deep at the base of the plant. We'll just pluck those off if you can see them. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's about 15 in there. Now, so when the rhizobia are pink, they're producing nitrogen for the plant, so that's important. When they're white, they're very immature, and when they're green, they're, they're not functional and possibly unhealthy. Sometimes they're large enough just to use your fingernail to cut them in half, and these are quite small and still quite young. This is young, a young stand, and I can see they're white, so they're not really, I'm not sure you can tell, but they're not really functioning. Uh, fairly early in the season, these I would check again in a few weeks. Uh, the rule of thumb for stands that are under two years of age would be we're counting plants at that point, and uh, the year of, in the year of seeding we end up with about 25 by that first fall. So if we're now in the second second year after seeding, we should have about 12 in spring, uh, and we may end up at about six in fall. So there's a range. If we end up with about eight now in spring. That may be okay because you'll be at six by fall anyway. So um, in, in stands older than two years, we, now we count stems per square foot. And the target there is, is, on a 100% alfalfa stand is to be about 40 to 50 stems per square foot. Uh, in the U.S. dairy industry, they target 50. Our conditions here are a little bit different, but uh, we're happy with between 40 and 50. Uh, now if you have a mixed stand, um, what you would do is count the number of grass plants, uh, compare that to the number of alfalfa plants to get your ratio. Say for example you're 50% grass plants, then rather than targeting 40 to 50 stems on your alfalfa, you're down to 20 to 20, 25. Okay, and if the stand's looking a little rough uh, in the spring, it's maybe getting a little old, is there anything you can do that year if you're not going to be taking it out to nurse it along one more year? 
Absolutely, especially in the in the in years like this, I know there's a, there's feed shortages in certain areas. Um, it, it's not a problem to fertilize; uh, that will bump up your yields. There's no question about it. Uh, certainly, allow the grasses if they've taken over your stand to provide some yield. So. Uh, Let's focus on a nitrogen application. Uh, if you had a soil test, it doesn't hurt to put phosphorus on as well. That will help your alfalfa a little bit longer this year. Um, it's important for protein production. And uh, so let's see if we can put both N and P down.